Hi, Oz from the LakeFS team. Today I want to show a very cool new feature in LakeFS called LakeFS Mount. Using LakeFS Mount, you can take any path from your existing LakeFS repository and essentially mount it onto your laptop, remote server, wherever it is, allowing applications to simply read and write data as if it was local files. The nice thing about Mount is that it's highly optimized for performance. So data doesn't actually get copied onto the local machine until it's being requested by the application. And this is very tunable. Now, another really nice aspect of Mount is the concept of built-in reproducibility. So when you look at your existing machine learning project, typically you have two kind of key parts, right? You would have your function, whatever it is that's doing any transformation or building a model, right? This is the logic itself. You have some input, typically this would be training data. Uh, it might also be environment variables or other types of configuration. Uh, and given that these two are deterministic and don't change over time, you would get the same output. Right? So if my code is deterministic and if I'm using the same input data, I'm guaranteed to always get back that same output. And we care about this with machine learning, right? Especially if we want to kind of trace back our steps to see what happened to our model over time, try to iteratively improve it. We want to be able to go back always to that same snapshot and continue from there. Uh, and like FS mounts makes it super easy. So let's see a live example. So I've already gone ahead and created a LakeFS repository called Image Lake. And inside, I have just a single data set that I took off of Kaggle with amazing pictures of things that are either alpacas, so beautiful and graceful, or things that are not alpacas, such as giraffes, I guess. Um, and I've set up a small machine learning project using TensorFlow. Let's look at that. And it has just two files, one to train a model. The second one is to use it to infer from an image whether or not it's an alpaca. So let's look at that. So let's look at train first. So as you can see, it's going to read some input location. This is where our training images should reside. Uh, it's just going to accept that as a parameter, and then it's going to write out a model to this location. This is the code used to actually build out that model, and then it's going to save it. So very simple. The predict end uh, would simply load that model that we created during the, the train phase, get an image as an argument, and tell us whether or not it believes it to be an alpaca. Very cool, very simple. Let's see how we can use data from LakeFS using LakeFS mount. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call the Everest command line. That's the name of the command line used for LakeFS mount. And I'm going to say mount, then I'm going to give it our remote path containing our images, which in our case is this path. And I'm going to say the name of the local directory, which this would get mapped to. So in our case, I'll just call it data. And as you can see, this took no time at all because so far I haven't accessed anything. So no data was actually copied over. One thing is that LakeFS is warning me that main might not be reproducible, right? This is a branch. It might change over time and that it's actually going to reference the current commit for main, which is this ID right here. And we'll come back to that in a second when we talk about reproducibility. But first, let's run our training job. So I'm going to run train.py. I'm going to pass that data directory. And actually, before I do that, let, let's explore it, right? Let's see what's inside data. So it looks just like what we saw on the remote LakeFS side, right? This is exactly the same data. If I look at our alpacas, all the same images, just open one just to see a beautiful alpaca in all its glory. So majestic. Cool. So now we can go back and run our train job. And let's give it the data directory as input. It's going to take a few seconds. Great. And we have our model ready. And we have our is alpaca model. Let's try to run our inference. So we'll say Python predict. Let's give it one of our alpaca images, which is data alpaca. And then let's just pick a random one. That's a, a result, I guess. Great. So at this part, we've done our training. We have a model. We tested it. Let's say we're very happy with it. Um, now we want to be able to reproduce it later, right? So we want to be able to kind of commit that snapshot of code and data together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say git add data. And those of you who are familiar with git might gasp for a second here because hey, I might be adding all of these images tracked by LakeFS to be tracked by Git, and we really don't want that. 
But the nice thing about Everest is that just by doing so, instead of tracking all the images, what I'm actually seeing is that it's just tracking this one small file. And this file contains the reference to the data that I was using as this mount point. Right, so what I see here is the path to the data. Instead of main, it's going to tell me this is the commit ID that was used, if you remember that from before, and the path to wherever the remote data is. And when I commit this, only this small file gets tracked. And anyone else looking to reproduce those results can then do it very easily using this small reference. So let's see how that looks like. So let's say I'm a colleague or even myself a month from now. I no longer have this copy of the repository. I'm doing a fresh clone of it to another location. So let's say git clone. And this could be GitHub or anything else. Here I'm just using the local directory. And let's call it repro, as in reproducibility. So this is a fresh copy of the directory. And I see that there is a data directory here but it only contains that small source file. Now, if I want to rehydrate this with the data as it existed at the time of training, all I have to do is say Everest mount, and instead of giving a URI, all I have to say is just mount data, whatever that's referencing. And as you can see, data now contains the exact same input information that was used alongside this version of the code, right? If I change anything here, I can commit both, and whoever does a clone or a pull next will see those two moving together, All right? So we always get both code uh, and our logic moving together, right? Logic and the data. And th this way, we're always guaranteed to be able to reproduce our results. And this makes it very easy. Um, so yeah, that's Lake of Mount in a nutshell. As you can see, it's very, very helpful when it comes to reproducibility. If you want to learn more, check out the links below. And thank you.